I am your host, Debbie, here to help you get in the know about Waco. This week, we're going to be talking about some upcoming dining experiences happening here in Waco and around town. This week, we have special guest... Matt Cummins. And... Neil Simpson. Awesome. Okay, well, tell me a little bit about yourselves. So, my name's Matt. Yeah, I own a what was supposed to be catering company, uh, <laughs> which has turned into still caterings. We still do caterings. A uh, small dinner party private chef company. Uh, we do just different kind of open fire um, dinners, yeah. That's pretty cool. Uh, my name's Neil. I'm the general manager for Lighthouse Coffee and Wine here in Waco. Uh, we do craft coffee and now craft cocktails and fine dining. Uh, we've guest chef appearances usually every three to five weeks. That's so awesome. So tell me a little bit about what brought you to Waco. What brought me to Waco was Houston. Getting out of Houston. Okay. <laughs> That's a good reason. Uh, I have three kids, and uh, it's just too much, too many, too crazy. I understand that. So, yeah, uh, that was about four years ago. Uh, good for you. That's one year more than me. Word. Wow. Uh, I came to Waco in 2017 as a chance to kind of get back to Texas after living out of the state for a number of years. Um, moved here with my cousin, thought I'd be here for about six weeks, and three and a half years later, here I am. So, <laughs> Woo! has a weird habit of growing on me a little bit. That's what happens. Everybody always says that they leave Waco, but then they either end up coming back, or you just end up in Waco and you never leave. There is no in between. Yeah, <laughs> I, I'm probably not going anywhere. Exactly. So I you... bought a house, so, you know. Time will tell. Time will tell. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, tell me a little bit about your upcoming events. So, with Von Seals, we do um, a twice a month dinner out at our house in McGregor. We got this really cool front yard with some oak trees kind of growing, and we call it Dinner Under the Oaks. We host usually eight to ten people. Um, everything's open fire, comes right off, right off the grill, right in front of you. Um, Southern hospitality is just me and my wife kind of opening up our house for, for folks who want to come eat some delicious food. Um, we've got several, you know, the 13th of September is coming up, um, with, uh, Chef Dave Verlay is actually pre- presenting this menu. Wow, that's a pretty interesting crossover there. Funny how you you also have Chef Dave for (laughs) coming to Lighthouse. Oh my goodness. I know. What a cute. Everybody knows everybody here in Waco, especially in food and cocktails and coffee. In the hospitality. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, But if if you haven't checked out Matt's Dinners on the Oaks, uh, they're fantastic. So definitely go check those out. Uh, We get the opportunity to actually have Dave Ferlay come and guest chef at Lighthouse coming up on September 3rd. Uh, We're almost sold out, but I've got a few seats left. Uh, You can make those reservations at lighthouse.com, lighthousewaco.com slash dinner reservations. Uh, he's going to do a six course. We call it our Thursday six at six. Um, it's going to be six courses at 6 p.m. Uh, with six cocktails offered optionally. So you get everything from lamb tartare to a frisé melon salad, watermelon granita with some sotol, which is a little cousin of tequila, which is really nice, uh, terrace major, and, of course, some lavender honey ice cream. All those will be paired individually with a different cocktail or bourbon pour um, to really bring out the essence of the dish. So we're featuring the chef. Uh, we're also featuring our craft cocktail scene, plus great downtown views of the Alco building, the courthouse in Waco. Lighthouse Waco is a, is a great venue to do these at. We're really excited to have a second one. That sounds so amazing. And what kind of dishes can we see with you? Oh, this next one. Uh, so actually, Dave, uh, Dave Ferlay is going to do seafood. Oh, nice. Open fire seafood on the 13th. Um, five courses, cocktails, all the good stuff. Uh, but typically what you're going to see out of us is a very meat and uh, vegetable-driven, simple kind of approach to food. Uh, salt, pepper, burnt carrots, and some steak. That sounds amazing. Kind of, kind of what I do. But yeah. So, but expect seafood for the 13th. That's pretty awesome. Yeah. And do you have any tickets left? We do. We have six tickets left. And uh, how can you get those tickets? You can check us out on our Instagram, Von Seals, B-O-N-C-I-L-L-E-S, Von Seals. Whenever I was inviting you on the show, I was like, I'm going to mispronounce Von Seals a thousand oh, times. Everyone does. It's totally cool. <laughs> if you go, if you actually go to our Instagram, I recently changed it to say pronounce. <laughs> like <laughs> Von, V-A-G-H-N, uh, S-E-A-L. That's super awesome. And what inspired you guys to start doing these events? Oh, man. Um, these kind of dinners that I do are just so close to my heart. Um, the very kind of essence of what we do is Von, at Von Seals is Southern hospitality, you know, just open up your house. Cause Von, so Von Seals was, came out of, well, it's my grandmother's name. So my love for my grandmother and her love for hospitality. So, yeah, it's just a beautiful way to show love. Yeah, we, we feel a 
similar bond, uh, especially to local chefs. That's really, uh, with craft coffee and craft cocktails, we felt the next big thing was going to be uh, craft cuisine. And the best way to do that for us was to take people out of a fine dining environment, bring them to some place casually accepting that they're already familiar with, and then introduce them to a chef they probably haven't heard of before. Uh, so you get these, these really inspired uh, ideas from these new chefs who are up and coming and get a chance to perform in front of a bunch of people. Uh, if they make it big, they go home with a big pot of money because they sold out all their tickets. And if they don't do so well, they get a chance to come back and do it again. Uh, it's a learning experience for everyone. We get the benefit of great food. Um, our guests get the benefit of a great experience, a great ambiance, and some personal ties with the chef because we cap it at 20 people. So it's a very intimate environment, uh, but still quite casual. So that's that's really what we want to do is we want to feature local and surrounding area chefs that are maybe up and coming uh, and, and get their food to tie in with uh, with teaching you know, our craft cocktail mixologists how to do pairings as well. That's so awesome. And what are some of the other chefs that you've had? I know you guys were talking about David. Who else? So I got the distinct... Um, what is it? Honor yeah. of being the very first one uh, last month. That was our inaugural. Um, to do it, and it was a it was a great time. Neil has a, such a heart for hospitality, like I do, and it's just so evident in those dinners. So I suggest if you're gonna get go to these dinners, not only pay for the food, pay for the pay for the uh, the, the pairing. cocktail pairing because it's. Food. He, he thinks about food the way I think, or thinks about drinks the way I think about food. It's so crafted and, and beautiful. And it's a team effort over there. You know, we have, I have a, a team of all brand new bartenders, uh, which means no bad habits, which is good. Uh, but it also means that, that we're always learning all the time. And, uh, and my goal, at least as the, as the GM of Lighthouse, is I want our cocktails to be where other bartenders in town come to get inspired. Uh, we're not trying to be pretentious. We're not trying to be the very best at everything or get any accolades. We just want we want the locals, the the ones who are making these drinks, the, whether they're home bartenders or professionals, to come check us out, try something new, and be like, "Wow, I could do that! Holy cow! Let me go back and try that at home, or let me try that at my home bar." Uh, so for us to get a chance to do that with a new staff and let them contribute to the menu, uh, we host I host cocktail contests with my staff to get them to help create these menus. Uh, it gets everyone involved; everyone has some buy-in, and then you know the customer is really the one the end result that gets the benefit from that because they get this thing they've never tried anywhere else along with this fantastic food all for a really pretty bargain price right there on the basically on the steps of the Alico building. All right, so now you have to tell me, talking about all this cocktail creation, do you have any specialties or any secret menu items? <laughs> secret menu, no. Uh, though what I will tell you is that we do, um, we have the makings for basically every classic cocktail. Though we try not to keep classic cocktails on the menu because that's a little boring. We can do them, we're happy to do them, we're going to do them very well. Uh, but the way our menu is structured is we have three signature drinks um, that have some essence of our espresso, our coffee from Olympia in them. So we have an espresso martini made with our Big Truck Espresso. We have a cocktail called the Road Less Travel, which is an egg white bourbon cocktail with espresso in it. And then we have a riff on a palmetto, we call it the Hemingway. And it's a rum and um, red vermouth cocktail with uh, our infused, uh, the vermouth is infused with our Big Truck Espresso as well. So those three are signature, they're all year round. And then we have five to six rotating seasonal cocktails based on what's in season. So you're actually, we're at the end of a season right now. This is very exciting. Uh, in about a week, we're going to launch our fall cocktail menu. We're talking figs and pear and all that good uh, fall season stuff. It's going to be really delicious. So check out those menus as, they, as we change them out. Uh, we're trying to do that every season. So four times a year, we should have a brand new menu. That's so awesome. And I'm glad you brought up uh, moving into the new season because what do you guys want to see in the future? Like, what can you expect from you guys in the future? What can we expect? Oh, man, I have I have no idea. It, this, this year's been – I don't even look to the future anymore. I'm just <laughs> – Corona? Oh, what's in front of me now? Yeah. <laughs> 2020. Um, no, I don't know, you know. Uh, my wife asked me this question the other day, like, you know, what would it be like if we owned a restaurant or owned this? You know, I, I don't know. I like what I'm doing – Keeping it at around 20 people, 20, it's uh, it's just so perfect because my hands get on everything, you know, and, and uh, there's no room, there's no room for, for error at that point, uh, you know. If I'm going to make it perfect, I'm going to make it perfect for, for those 10 people, and uh, I really enjoy that, so I don't know. Yeah, I think for us, uh, what we'd really like to do is build a regular group of guests um, that, that have a kind of a, a reserve seat every three weeks at one of these dinners. Maybe we even increase the frequency. Um, we'd love to see people have to give up their seat for someone else to get a chance. That means we're doing great things. We'd also, I think a big win for us is going to be getting 
new chefs from kind of around the state uh, interested in this. So a sous chef in Austin or, um, you know, an exec up in Dallas who's maybe starting a small place and wants to branch out to something bigger or scale down to something more intimate. That would be a really cool thing for us to bring some of those that outside expertise into the Waco food scene. Because that's one thing I think that Waco food needs is just more more experimentation, more cutting edge. We've got a huge booming tourism business right here in Waco that we're just now starting to tap into. Uh, I want to see cocktails and food push to the next level, and I think you know it's, it's really exciting to be on the forefront of that. Yeah, of course, and you've already touched on this, but how do you think that this can impact Waco or change the food scene of Waco? Well, I mean, you know, you, you think of food towns in Texas, you know, you think of Austin, obviously, because that's the, the epicenter, but you've got Dallas, you've got Houston. Uh, Houston's one of the most culturally diverse cities in the country, so the food scene there is crazy. Why couldn't we do that here on our scale? It doesn't have to be on Houston's scale or Dallas's scale, but like, you know, have these spots around town that is just so cool, you know, and that, that just goes to show, like, that could just push Waco beyond, I think, you know, like our art scene's getting there, music scene, we're working on that, yeah, yeah. uh, food scene, Th- those three things, they have to coincide. The perfect trifecta. They have yeah, to coincide. For sure, for sure, I think that's the, the biggest thing, too, is just, um, it, it, we're already the halfway point between Dallas and Austin. And Waco's finally starting to step into that role with some real gusto. Uh, let's take advantage of that and, and, and push the food and the wine and the, and the cocktail scene to that level. Let's make it a destination, not just for the big touristy things, which are great, but also for the local things that are great. The local chefs, the local mixologists, you know, people that they either grew up here or moved here that are, that are really pushing the envelope. Uh, let's make that a reason for people to come all the way to Waco and stay for a couple days before they keep going on their trip. Yeah, and specifically, what would you guys like to see here? Like, what events, what activities, what restaurants, what things would you like to see here? For me, it's live music. Yeah. Uh, For me, it's live music. Uh, You know, that was one thing in Houston when we lived there. Uh, We got to watch a show every every weekend if we wanted to. So, live music. um, And, like, an industry, when I say industry, like, hospitality industry style bar and restaurant. Something for, for us. You know, yeah. that, that's open late, has good food late, and drink specials late. Sure. Once we can open up a bar again. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. And yeah, we're probably should be a restaurant, so at least we get to still serve and have our bar going. Yeah. Um, now, I think for, for, for me, what I think would be really cool would be uh, some more food festivals. You know, see the food trucks come back uh, and, and see, see food come to the forefront. And, you know, when they finish the Riverwalk construction they're working on right now, it'd be great to see that area open up as an open food market. Uh, and, and, and get people to come in and, and try cuisines from all across the world. I've lived, I've only lived on the East Coast, I've lived on the West Coast, I've lived all over the world. And one of the coolest parts about being in those places is being able to get food from somewhere that you're not. And right now, Waco doesn't have a lot of that. We're starting to. Uh, but I think more of that would be really cool. That'd be really, really cool. That's so awesome. And for your events, what do you guys try to bring in, or what's the atmosphere that you guys try to create? So for Von Seals, it's, it's super simple. Like, we think in terms of backyard barbecues, redefining your backyard barbecue. Uh, you know, I always think eating and cooking outside just makes the food taste better. Uh, you know, I, I grew up in Texas, so eating on coals and eating outside is something I've done my whole life. So bringing that to, to the scene, you know, eat outside, eat off a fire. It's okay. It's a little expensive to burn fire to boil wood, but, you know, it's <laughs> worth it. <laughs> Uh, I think for us at Lighthouse, we want, we want structured casual. Uh, I want my guests to feel like they're in somebody's, you know, porch space or somebody's, you know, uh, patio with their patio windows. But I don't, I, I don't want it to appear like it's hasty or not put together. So my team works really, really hard to make sure that it still feels fine dining without any of the pretension. And that's the goal. If you walk away feeling like it was just the most chill evening you've ever had with some of the best food you've ever tasted and my staff work their tails off for it, then we did our job. Uh, and if you don't, if it feels a little clustered or a little messed up, then we have an opportunity to get better at it. So we're definitely looking for that structured, casual environment. That's so awesome. And what are you guys looking forward to the most about your events? Yeah, I just love hosting people. It's, it's, it's yeah. rad. Yeah. I just love hosting people. It's straight up like just having someone come out and get to serve them, you know. I guess it's my love language. Yeah, Matt and I, at, the, at our last, our inaugural dinner, uh, we got to go out and introduce each course, you know, and that's something that we're 
they carry on with each of these following events at Lighthouse. Uh, but to see the chef and the and the, the bartender come up and talk about why we made the thing we made and, and what we expect you to get out of it, and then give you the opportunity to go do it. Um, probably no greater thing uh, warms my heart than watching someone take a sip of something I've created for the first time and seeing the look on their face. And I know Matt can, can totally relate to that. That's why we do what we do. That's why we do what we do. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. How did you guys get into the food scene originally? <laughs> <laughs> By necessity? <laughs> yeah. Gotta pay that rent. <laughs> yeah, uh, I mean, I was a young kid. Uh, I could go back and tell tell you about Bon Seal, my grandma, my first food memory, making sausage gravy with her. Uh, but honestly... I got into it by necessity. I was a kind of a wayward kid, and I found my home in kitchens and have stayed there since I was like 16. Yeah. I won't even tell you how long that is. <laughs> but, yeah, not as long as me. But, but it's been a long been time. A <laughs> so, yeah, it just kind of grew from, from you know, you, you find family in, in hospitality industry, you know, and, and you hang on to that. And that's something that's kind of just carried on through what I yeah. do. I, I've bounced around hospitality my whole life. I've had a four, three other careers. This is my fourth one now. Um, and I, you know, I started in hospitality. Like a lot of kids do busting tables, working in a fast food restaurant. Um, and then I drifted away. I went to college, got a degree, did a military thing, did a retail thing, and then eventually found myself needing to come back to something I knew. Uh, and it was easy to step back into food because it's always been a comfort zone for me. So I started serving tables again, almost 40 years old, um, <laughs> moved up to become a bartender, and then I found my passion, right? And for the first time in my entire adult life, I found my passion behind the stick of the bar, creating cocktails, um, and, and really the science behind that. And so now, now I know what I want to do. I do this not because I have to, I do it because I want to. And I, I get to make a little bit of money on it, but, but really I just get to go home every night knowing that I had a, a lot of fun, and I had a great job, and I, and I couldn't be happier. That's so awesome. And again, I I love what you guys are doing for the Waco community and what you guys have brought to the Waco community, um, especially with all the growth we've been experiencing. This is just the next step that's really going to put us past everything. Um, now, do you guys have anyone you guys want to shout out or anyone, any restaurants or anything you guys want to rep around town? Anything you want to shout out? Man, for sure. I want to shout out... Um Barnett's Public House, they just opened back up again, yeah. uh, man, after like four months of being shut down almost exclusively. Uh, they're reopened as a fine dining restaurant with a brand new menu. Chef Daniel Wade over there is killing it, y'all. He's killing it. Uh, so that's a really great stuff you need to go check out. He's the Waco Chop Champion. Yeah, he sure is. Chop yeah. Champion. Champion. Waco, Waco Chop Champion. Yeah, for sure. Barnett's. Uh, shout outs. I mean, these guys over here, Lighthouse, they're doing it right. Yeah. I mean, the, the coffee's great. The cocktails are great. Barnett's. Um... Big ups to, to Milo, who I'm about to go get a cocktail at. So. Woo! Nice. And <laughs> definitely check out Dinner Under the Oaks and Mass Place. You guys, if you haven't done it yet, it's amazing. It's amazing. And of course, go ahead and plug yourselves. Check us out online at Von Seals, V-O-N-C-I-L-L-E-S. Yeah, same, lighthousewaco.com. And we're also on Instagram and Facebook. Come find us, check out our events. You can book dinner reservations for our Thursday 6 and 6. You can also reach out to us with any questions. Our menu's online and be ready for those seasonal cocktails, the fall season. Almost upon us, y'all. Mm. Pumpkin, sweet potatoes. Yeah. Pumpkin yeah. everything. <laughs> oh, yeah. But, but, but reimagine, right? You know, of we're course. Not basic. Of but, course. But it'll be there. We can't, I can't go without pumpkin. I need a PSL all. in my life, but make it extra. Yeah, I got you. I got you. <laughs> I mean, at my heart, I'm basic. Yeah. I'm so <laughs> but thank you guys so much. And again, I did just want to reiterate how much we really appreciate everything you're doing for the community. And we just love these events. And I'm so glad to see these happening in the Waco community. So thank you guys. Thank, thank you so much. It was great being here. All right. Thank you for tuning into this week's podcast. This is your host, Debbie, signing off. Now that you know, go. Just go, Waco. This has been Rogue Media Network Podcast.